Welcome to Scientific American Frontiers. I'm Alan Alda. We all like to think that we understand our own minds, but we carefully weigh the pros and cons when we make a decision. And that after we've made it, even if we have cause to regret it, we know why we decided the way we did. Oh, sure, we know some choices are more emotional than rational. But even then, we think we're conscious of all the conflicting arguments that run through our minds as we make a choice. Well, in this program, we'll find out how utterly deluded we are as we join in experiments revealing just how sneaky and underhanded our brains can be. We'll discover why our brains convince us to buy a pricey branded version instead of the cheaper alternative. How we're fooling ourselves if we think we harbor no hidden prejudices. And we find out why we sometimes make decisions that make no sense at all. That's coming up on tonight's episode, Hidden Motives. This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. What makes a product cool? What's going on in your brain right now as you see objects both cool and uncool floating by? Can your brain tell the difference? How is it deciding? What's the hidden motive behind the quest to be cool? Today in our culture, cool is a social norm. It's a social good. It's something that is desirable to have. We rate people in terms of how cool they are. We all have at least some kind of implicit understanding of what the rules are about being cool. For young people, it's a terribly important thing. There's nothing worse for a high schooler than not feeling cool mm. to be banished by it. So it's really a very important uh, social good for us to have. It defines ultimately our identity. So how cool am I? This is the emergency buzzer. If you need us at any point. To find out, I've agreed to have my head examined head by lying in an MRI machine that will allow Steve Quartz to peer into my brain while I'm looking at pictures. Steve wants to see if my brain reacts differently to the images of things I think are cool as opposed to those I find uncool. One problem for me right away is that I have no clue whether many of the 140 things parading in front of my eyes are cool or not, or even whether I think they're cool or not, or even in some cases what they are. It doesn't matter. All I have to do consciously is look at them. It's what my unconscious is doing, what's going on in my brain that I'm not even aware of, that Steve and his collaborators are interested in. Because while on the one hand, what's cool right now in our culture can be viewed as trivial and passing. After all, there's nothing more uncool than something that was cool last week. On the other hand, how we decide what's cool, Steve believes requires the most highly evolved parts of our brains, the most uniquely human, and involves nothing less than our sense of self. All that from looking at stuff like shoes. It took about 30 minutes in the scanner my brain now reeling from consumer overload. So now when we're done with the scan, we have a little survey for you. So okay. if you and that ASP is Steve Quartz's extremely uh, cool collaborator. This works, uh, all the images that you saw in the experiment are presented mm -hmm. here on this paper. Mm -hmm. It goes from zero to five, and you're gonna rate each image from zero, meaning not cool, to five, <laughs> meaning very cool. Very cool, okay, so what, what, how do I translate that to me? I mean, if I think, if I, do I like it? I think it's, it's uh, pleasant, nice, I pro, uh, uh, well, how do, what, how do I... How you experience them. If you think it's cool... But different people, they mean different things by cool. Exactly. This is, it's not, per, it's this, is, this is not me saying what I think other people think are cool. This is me saying how I respond yes. to it. exactly. Okay. By the way, all these objects were chosen for their coolness by a panel of design experts. But it's not what they think that matters, right? This looks uh, uncool to me, but I like it. So I'm saying that's cool. Sort of cool. Oh, very uncool here. Very not cool. 
I don't know what this is. I don't like it. Here, now we got very cool. Finally, we got very cool. The iPod, even I can recognize as cool. But most of this stuff... You rated most of the objects as uncool. Mm. Um, the, the majority of them is uncool. So we took the, the ones that you rated cool and the ones you rated as uncool and looked at the differences. And so here's, here's, you, here's you. Okay. Uh, this is you <laughs> looking at the cool objects. Yeah, at the cool ones. At the cool ones. Very little activation overall. It seems that the cool stuff left me cold. My brain remaining stubbornly indifferent even to things like the iPod that I thought were cool. But here's the surprise. To objects I later labeled uncool, my brain lit up, most especially in an area that has long fascinated Steve Quartz, right at the very front of the brain, where he believes our sense of self resides. About a third of everyone run through the scanner had this strong negative reaction to the uncool, including, to her astonishment, Annette. You had the same response? I got the same response, and I said, I just ignored all the images that are uncool. I'm, I'm just focusing on the cool images in the scanner. I came out, looked at the results afterwards, and I responded exactly like you. That's so Completely interesting. Completely unanticipated. Okay, now what about people like us? <laughs> <laughs> what, for example, did you react negatively to in that list? Well, there were some sunglasses, some cars, water bottles, shoes. I mean, especially clothes for me is a, it's a big deal. And I think the people that are high negative responders are very consciously aware of what's cool, but their main focus is to stay away from everything that is uncool, and that's how our res uh, brains respond. It doesn't seem like it results in um a gray uh, life. I mean, you seem very cool. Your hair is cool. Your outfit is cool, right? You, you look at your ring there. It's great. Thank you. <laughs> well, I think that just the fact that uh, my brain responds so intensely to the negative stimuli, the uncool, makes me maybe sweat even harder uh, to, to be cool. But while Annette and I have brains that unconsciously recoil from the uncool, People in the next biggest group tested in the scanner have the opposite response. Their brains ignore the uncool but go wild, especially in that part at the front where our sense of social status lies when confronted with cool. What's more, another part of the brain involved in planning movement also lights up, suggesting they're subconsciously reaching out to grab the product. Being one myself. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, you're highly positive in response I am. to cool. Yep. I am. Yeah. I, ha I, it certainly tells me that I, it, it gives me clues when I walk into a store <laughs> yeah. of what to be aware of. So his brain is biased by everything that is positive, uh, like the, uh, the cool stimuli, is, uh, is very attractive to his brain. And it might be that people in that category are more impulsive, they're shopaholics, or they're, they're, it's important to them to be on top of trends and know about new products coming out in the market first. Uh, they, they, they tend to jump on the new stuff faster than the people who are more worried about uh, being cool in terms of staying away from the uncool products. And Steve, is that how you see yourself? Was it a surprise to you to scan yourself? No, it actually confirmed my, <laughs> my wife's suspicion. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Have you scanned your wife? No, she's afraid to know what she is. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprisingly, this new ability to see inside our heads as we contemplate what's cool enough to covet, what attracts us to $8 bottles of water and $5,000 watches, is also attracting the attention of marketers who'd like us to buy them. In fact, a whole new business called neuromarketing is already using brain imaging to seek out the hidden motives behind our consumer desires.